Welcome back to the channel today, guys, and I gotta be real. I really enjoyed this episode of Trigon today. I thought this episode was really, really good, actually. Where we really kind of break knives down a little bit. And even in the original, he was like this too, but he is really not as evil as we think. He takes things to the extreme, but if you watch the events of this episode, I, I don't know how you can really argue he's not justified in what he's doing. He, he kind of is, if you think about it. It's, it's a little wild. This was a fantastic episode. So let's just get straight into it, actually, and just talk about Trigon Stampede. Episode 9 today, because I think it was a pretty damn good episode. So our episode today begins with us seeing Knives playing the piano. As we transition back to him as a kid playing the piano, and how he's always loved to do that as Vash comes and joins him. And he looks annoyed in this scene, but we know he's really not. Because this scene really showcases just how close these two were, inseparable. And how that Vash is really, truly the only one that legitimately understands how Knives feels. As much as these two probably won't want to admit it to each other, they're very, very similar, still. And it's here we see the doctor come in, looking young as hell, actually, as he says, I got what you asked for. As he asks Knives, what are you really trying to do here? But it's here all of a sudden, we just hear the emergency system kick on, as we know that something has gone terribly wrong. And as we transition to our next scene, we see that they're also on one of the crashed colony ships, as Knives looks on horrified. As we see that all the plants they have on the ship are dying. As the doctor said, we've hit our production limit. Those fools put too great a load on the plants. It cut them off from the higher dimension. They can't maintain their bodies. And as we see knives approaching one, we see that it's aging rapidly and dying. And it's here as knives reaches out and touches a container. We, we know he cares. These are his people. He's watching dying. This is tearing him up inside. But it's here as they're standing there, we see these two other scientists come and tell them, this area is off limits. What are you doing here? As we hear the doctor ask them, what are you doing? Why did you continue to overload them beyond the threshold? As they tell him, isn't it obvious? To speed up the reconstruction. It's the only way we can hope to prosper on this desert planet. As they tell them, now get out of here. Their last run will start soon. And it's here that Knives gets furious as he says, heal them now, doctor. As he tells him, it's too late. But it's here in this moment, we see the last run begin. And it's pretty messed up, as we just hear the last run. When you force a plant that's reached its production limit to go out of control, it uses up all of its remaining energy. One final harvest. And it's here as Knives watches all the plants die around him. All of his people, the doctor says, I'm sorry. Please forgive us. Forgive us humans. And I'm going to be honest. I don't know if that's actually possible at this point. This is extremely messed up. Like, good lord, man. And it's here we transition to the end of our last episode. As Vash shows up. And it's here after staring each other down, Knives says, Vash, you must have heard them. Their screams. Now you know, this is the true nature of humanity. And it's here we hear the scumbag scientists say, they were born to serve us humans. I'm sure they were happy to be useful as we see more of them show up. And as they all grab knives, he asks Vash, didn't you hear them? Their dying cries? If so, there are no need for words. Because it's at this point that Knives knows what he has to do. As he says, just let me hear your screams now. And it's here he violently kills all the humans behind him. And it's here as Bash veg begs Nye to stop. He says, I haven't heard that name in a long time. 
As he tells Vash, I now represent my myriad of brethren spread across the planet. I shall cut down human humanity in their steed. I am Millions Knives. As we just see the name of our episode. And it's here Vash asks him why. Saying, Rem sacrificed herself to save these people. As he tells him, that's right. If it wasn't for her meddling, every ship other than the plant carriers would have been rubble. And after all the work I did to swap out the navigation data for every ship, too. And it's here as we see even more humans show up to apprehend them. Knife says, Vash, let's build a paradise together. Free our brethren from these foul humans. But Vash counters and says that plants can't survive without humans to take care of them, though. Rem said so herself. Outside of human control, plants use up all their energy in one burst and die. As Knives says, so you bought into that nonsense too, huh? And it's here he tells Vash flat out, no matter how comfortable, chains are still chains. But we're different. You and I have our own will. And we walk freely. This is power. As he proceeds to cut down all the other scientists that have appeared. Quite brutally, I might add. It's here we get a pretty important scene, actually, as Knives picks up one of their guns and says, An evil weapon of the sinners, taking lives easily from afar, just with the twitch of a finger. A fitting arm for a human lover like you as he thrust the gun into Vash's face. And now we know how Vash got his gun. As Knives tells him, the plants are the ones that need power. I have what we need. Now all you and I need to do is proceed. But it's here in this moment we see the arrival of Ludia as she tells Vash, I came to get you. Let's go home together. And it's here upon seeing her, Knife says, what a great opportunity. Take aim, Vash. Kill her as your first step. Really giving off like Emperor Palpatine vibes right here, like, do it. Do it now. <laughs> and it's here we see that Vash just can't do it. He refuses to do it. She's his family. And it's here upon realizing that, Knives takes the gun and says, you really can't do anything without me, huh, Vash? And it's here as he approaches Ludia with the full intent of killing her. Vash actually charges at him and tackles him and tells him, You know, until the bitter end, all I did was let Rem protect me. And because of that, I lost her. So I won't let you take anyone else away from me. And it's here we can see that Nias is hurt hearing that but mad at the same time as he throws Vash off of him and knocks him into the wall. And as we see him get up, he says, You witch. How many times? How many times will you steal him from me? As he starts choking Ludia out. And as Vash stands up and begs him to stop, we get a very important scene right here. As all of a sudden, his powers start activating. And we see that even Vash doesn't know what's going on right here. And it's here we see the doctor realizes that, wait, is that a gate? As we just see everything start getting sucked in it. It's basically a little black hole that Vash has in his hands right here. If it isn't stopped, literally everything here is going to get sucked in it. So it's here we see Knives jumps into action and actually cuts Vash's arm off black hole gate included and as we see his arm in itself get sucked into the hole it stops and now we see how Vash lost his arm and as he collapses and Ludia runs over to go to help him we hear Knife scream don't touch him don't touch Vash but it's here in a pretty heartbreaking scene we see Vash pulls the gun out and point it at Knives and even though he's hurt in this scene, we see him just start laughing. As he gets up and says, just wait for a short while. A mere century or so. I promise you I'll build a world of plants. 
And with that, him and the doctor leave as Vash passes out. That was a pretty sad reunion they had, guys. I'll be honest about that. Kind of tough. Because we see they both care about each other so much. They're just on opposite sides of the spectrum when it comes to how to deal with humans. And that has divided them so much. But it's here we're going to transition back to present time. Because in last week's episode, we saw that Vash woke up on this ship from previously. But I didn't mention that because it was so quick. But he wakes up on the ship that he was raised on. As we hear Brad say, Hey Vash, heard you busted your arm again, man. As he says, Man, every time you come back, you've messed up my masterpiece here. As Vash is just like, Yeah, I got no argument for that. You're kind of right. <laughs> as Vash tells him, man, you never change, Brad. As Brad tells him, look who's talking, man. Forever young. I'm jealous over here. Look at me. And it's here we just see Ludia show up as she says, welcome back, Vash. And it's here as Vash asks what happened to the others, she tells him, they're safe. Everyone from the Sandstreamer, the Orphanage, and your friends. As we just see the whole gang show up, and Wolfwood says, Who said anything about us being friends, man? Hello? <laughs> As Vash tells him, thank you. You guys are the reason we were able to stop the ship. And it's here Meryl asks Brad and Ludia if they've known Vash for a long time. As Brad says, yeah, I, I guess you could say that. About 150 years or so. As they're just like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 what? I excuse me? A century and a half? As Ludia tells them, we use cold sleep. And Brad says, we don't age during that time, obviously. As they say, many of the other passengers are actually still asleep right now. As Ludia says, we're only human after all. Although we do have a little help from technology. But Meryl adds, from plants too though, right? As Ludia decides, you know, let me show you guys something. And it's here as we transition to our next scene. It's honestly quite beautiful. As we see, they take them to what appears to be a biodome with green as far as the eye can see. A stark contrast to this world. And it's here upon tripping over them somehow, Meryl asks, What are these here? As Ludia says, These are flora, a.k.a. flowers. As she tells them, they grow using photosynthesis and multiply. They're a life form that is neither human nor worm. They're made of not just water, but nutrients as well. A little plant lesson for you guys today, in case you guys get a green thumb. And it's here Meryl realizes that, wait, if we make more of these, then we could save this planet. But Roberto says, it's not that simple though, is it? As he has to burst their bubble by saying, this dome must be supported by plants. As Ludia argues with him and says, the flora can help lessen the load on the plants, though. Given time, we can spread the greenery across the entire planet. As Roberto argues, yeah? And how long is that going to take? Decades? Centuries? But it's here Ludia tells him, no matter how long it takes, I want to follow the right path. I don't want to justify wrongdoing just to survive. Really showcasing that Vash really had an impact on them when he was younger. As Roberto even says, you sound like Vash right now. But it's here as we transition to Vash, Wolfwood, and Brad. We get more of a serious conversation as Wolfwood says, All right, Needle Noggin, I gotta ask you something. You don't think that you can make up with millions of knives, do you? As we can see that Vash can't really answer that question right now. But he tells Wolfwood, I won't kill. I will never kill anyone again. I'll find a way to save them all. The humans, the plants, and Nye. As Wolfwood says, more empty words. I swear to you, the day will come when you have to pick between them. But it's here... Our boy Brad decides to step up and say, huh, you're just like how I used to be. As he tells Wolfwood, trying to bite Vash's head off, thinking everything's all black and white. I was just like that when I was younger too. As he tells him, Vash is tough. You'll learn that yourself 
if you hang around long enough. And we really see that Brad has changed too. Because he really was like Wolfwood when he was younger. But it's here all of a sudden, as if to cut this moment short, we see Ludia rush into the room as we see that an emergency happened. As she says, a swarm of worms attacked us. As we see a giant crack in the dome and how Meryl and Roberto are gone. And it's here as they wake up in this mysterious room, they say, where the hell are we? As we just hear, welcome to the third of the seven cities. This is July, a crashed planet carrier, as we see that Zazi took them there. And it's here as Roberto asks him, Do you, did Nive send you? Zazi says, let's talk about something a little more interesting. As he says, this planet you call no man's land now stands at a crossroads. And it's here. We're going to really start getting into the nitty gritty. As Zazi says, who do we worms side with? You humans or the plants? As Roberto pulls out a gun and says, who are you to make such a grand judgment like that? But it's here Zazi tells him, this is our planet, you know. We were here long before humans came. Besides, humans are repeat offenders. You humans messed up your home planet, Earth, right? That's why you sent colony ships to this new planet. And it's here as Zazi makes projection of how the Earth used to be. He's about to hit these two with some cold, hard facts. As he tells them, Earth used to be a lush place with bountiful resources. It was full of life, and not just human. But, you humans gobbled it all up. And as Meryl says, that's a lie, Zazi says, why do you think the colony ships crashed? It was those twins that did it. And it's here as the walls rise around them. Zazi shows them where they really are. As we see thousands of plants lining the wall around them. As he says, knives brought them here from all over. And it's here all of a sudden we see the doctor find them here. He has no clue they were there as Zazie says, whoops, I guess he found us out. And it's here Meryl asks Zazie, why are you guys collecting the red plants to begin with? And it's here we see that the doctor doesn't want to tell them as Zazie says, I'll tell you then, but you have to tell me in return. Who will benefit this planet more? Humans? Or plants? Which do you think? And with that, our episode ends. Now, I really like this episode, guys. I thought this was a really good episode because we got to see a side of Knives that we haven't seen yet, which I do remember from the original show, that Knives isn't all bad. He's just doing the wrong things to achieve a righteous goal. And this whole time, we've talked about who, who's really right here, humans or plants? But we haven't put the third factor into the formula yet. And that would be worms. Of how this planet was basically the worms planet. And how the plants and the human both just kind of came in and took over. So now we have a third faction we have to worry about and deal with. And it's just really interesting. I'm really liking the direction we're going in this show. And I really can't wait till next week's episode, honestly. I'm pretty excited for it. But I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts down below on this episode. If you liked it, you didn't like it, let me know down below. But until next time, guys, I hope you have a great day, week, month, and year. And until then, deuces and have a blessed day. I will see you guys next time.